Hello, uh, my name is Andrea Walner. I'm a preschool teacher over at the Seattle Preschool Program that's at Olympic Hills Elementary. Um, I really miss uh, being with my kids right now. I'm at home uh, staying safe and keeping my germs to myself. And now that I've been home, I'm find my, finding myself getting, I don't know, a little bit bored. And I miss having a regular schedule and I miss playing with my friends and I miss doing uh, busy things to help me stay active and learn. So I'm making a video here in my kitchen at my house and I thought, hey, let's uh, have a little activity time together and have a little preschool time together. Now, uh, something that I'm really missing is having a daily routine and knowing what's gonna happen and knowing what I'm going to do each day. So one thing I did is I made myself a daily schedule. It looks a little bit like the schedule we use when we are in preschool at Olympic Hills. And our schedule each day, uh, we have the same schedule of things that we do, um, but it does change a little bit. Today, uh, right now, we're greeting each other with a friendly face and saying hello. Next, we're gonna plan an activity. I think we might do some Play-Doh today. Uh, we'll do some activities, clean up, because that's part of having fun too. Uh, we'll recall and review what we did so that we can remember what we did and think about some things that we might wanna add to our activity to make it more engaging and fun at home. We'll move a little bit. Maybe we'll have time to look at a book today, say goodbye, and then think about some things that we can do next time. Okay, so time for me to move my schedule marker. This is always really fun for preschoolers to do. Let's plan what we're going to do. Well, I wanted to play with some Play-Doh. It's one of my favorite things to play with, but I don't have any Play-Doh at home. So I looked up a recipe and I found this. It's called the best Play-Doh. Now, parents or adults, I'll put a link to this uh, after my video here so you can look up the recipe, but here's what the recipe is. Here, we're gonna move you down so you can see my, my bowl here, just like a cooking show, right? Okay, so first, I'm gonna put in some salt. Now, parents, you can have your kids measure out the salt and all of the different ingredients too. That's a fun way to add some science and some math into your activity time. Next, I have this stuff. I actually found this in the back of my cupboard. It's called cream of tartar. If you don't have this ingredient, you don't have to add it in, but it does make your Play-Doh, ooh, a tablespoon of that, that's the big one. It does make your Play-Doh last for a lot longer and makes it soft and squishy. Now next, I'm gonna add in some oil. I have some oil here, just so my Play-Doh is nice and soft. And then my Play-Doh needs one half cup of hot water. Okay, Ooh, I got that just out of my tap and I'm gonna mix this all up. So I'm mixing in the water and the oil with the salt so that the salt starts to dissolve. And dissolve means that the salt is starting to become one with the water. That's kind of cool. Okay. Now for some color. I like my color. I like my Play-Doh to be colored. And I found this in the back of my cupboard too. It's just some, uh, it's called food coloring. You can color your dough if you want, or you don't have to. Now let's see, one of my favorite colors is red. So I'm gonna make some red Play-Doh. What do you think, how many drops should I add? 10, okay, here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Ooh, there was some counting right there too. Okay, now comes the flour, one cup of flour. Ooh, I noticed that when I added that, it kind of poofed up. 
And then I just mix it up a little bit. Mixing it up. La, 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 la. It's a good way to get your kids cooking in the kitchen, too. Making this Play-Doh. Now, this Play-Doh does look kind of goopy. But don't worry. The more I mix it, the less goopy it will get. Okay. Might speed this up a little bit here. Go when so fast. Oh, you know the best mixing tool? Your hands. So let's get in there and start playing with our Play-Doh. Oh, yeah. Okay. So that's my Play-Doh all mixed up. And then what I need to do is I need to let it rest for a little while. So while it rests, right over here, oh, there y'all are. I think what I'm going to do now is wash up my hands and then I'll see you all back uh, in just a little bit and I'll show you what we get to do with our Play-Doh. So hang on a bit. Well, my hands are all clean. I'm doing a lot of hand washing lately and uh, that's a good thing. And my Play-Doh's ready. So uh, let's see what's next on our schedule. So on our daily schedule, we, uh, we said hello, we planned what we were gonna do, and now it's backwards on a movie screen here. It's uh, activity time. So let's play with our Play-Doh. I made some red with you, and the other day I also made some yellow and some green so that we just have a little bit of variety. Same recipe, I just used some different colors. And uh, what am I gonna do with my Play-Doh? There's so many things I can do. I could uh, make something that's silly, I could, boy, the possibilities are endless. Hmm, but I have just Play-Doh here, and I'm thinking, huh, when I play with Play-Doh at school, I usually have lots of tools. I have Play-Doh tools that my teacher has for me, but I don't have those at my home. So what I did, moms and dads, is I went around the house and I collected a bunch of different things for a Play-Doh tool kit. So here's my Play-Doh tool kit. I have a couple of them actually. I got some straws here. I thought that might be fun to use. Uh, we like finger monsters in my classroom, so I've got some finger monsters here in containers that the kids can see. Um, I could use plastic bags. I could use any containers that I have around my house, just so long as that it's easy for kids to um, get to and to use. I have, I don't know, I found some buttons. I found toothpicks and poker things. Um, when I go to the beach with my family, we collect rocks. I have things like scissors and plastic forks. Um, I have rollers at school, but I don't know, this looks like it could roll out some Play-Doh. And I have a ruler, and that's one of my Play-Doh tool kits. And then I also went around my house and I found things like um, some old stamps. Play-Doh really cleans off stamps. It's pretty awesome. I have some yarn, um, different odds and ends from my toolbox that I'm not using. And then I have different beads here. Uh, so I thought, hey, if you put together um, things like this and then keep it in a space in your house, that's a great place for kids to play with Play-Doh. This can uh, really add on to an activity. Kids will play for hours and hours and hours with Play-Doh, or at least they do at my house, and uh, create all different kinds of things. And so these are what are called, um, in teacher speak, as an open-ended material because there's not one way to use it. Uh, there's a million different ways to use it, and that really spurs on kids' imagination. So let's see here. So I talked to some of my students and asked them, hey, what have you been making at home with your Play-Doh and what are you doing at home? So let me show you some of the things that the kids are making. So this is my friend, Sarah. Sarah told me that she created um, some Play-Doh and put some sparkles in it. And then she found, it looks like she found some 
uh, noodles here and stuck them in there. And do you notice the shadow there? It must have been a sunny day at Sarah's house. Yeah, that's what Sarah made. And then my friend Maddox, he uh, wanted to play with some Play-Doh at home. And so he got out his car collection and it looks like, do you notice he made a pattern there? I see black and white and black and white. And then I told Maddox that I noticed his pattern. And then I asked him, I said, Maddox, I wonder why you lined the cars up that way. And he told me that he was having a race with Jackson. That's another one of my students. Jackson's is the red car in the front here. And his car went really fast. Yeah, so that's what some of my kids are doing at home with their Play-Doh. Now, just because I'm, I'm at home doesn't mean that I don't have my teacher brain on. And so I was thinking, well, how can I show parents how to use Play-Doh as a teaching tool? So uh, something else in my toolkit is I just have an old deck of cards. And we pulled out the deck of cards and my son, he picked the number three. And then he made a three here, and he added on some of those rocks. We put three finger monsters here. How many blobs of clay did he put? One, two, three. And then we've also got a little tin foil on here too. And sometimes at school, we call this, um, well, we call it, um, a placemat, so we'll call this a three mat. Yeah, that's something you could do with your Play-Doh at home. What else? Oh, my daughter, she really likes letters. So she's working on letters at home. And so in my toolkit, I just had some sticky notes and I asked her, what is a letter I, that we could make today? And so I, she said, Q. And she thought it was a quirky letter, huh? And so I wrote a Q here, and then my daughter, she rolled the Play-Doh, and she made a capital letter Q. And do you notice that she put some texture on her Play-Doh around here? I wonder how she did that. Huh. In her toolkit, I think she had a plastic fork and a plastic knife. Those are safe for kids to use at home. And I'm going to have to ask her, I wonder if she used the knife or if she used the fork there. Hmm, something fun. And then she also made, oh, look at, that's the lowercase letter Q right there. Yep, she made a little Q right there. Well, what else could you do with Play-Doh? Don't eat it. I mean, you could, but yuck. Well, sometimes... At school, our kids like to make uh, cookies with cookie cutters, uh, but we had my daughter, she decided she wanted to make me a hamburger. It's, it's gonna be lunchtime here pretty soon at my house. So look at, she used all of our different colors of Play-Doh here. We have our red and our yellow and our green, and I think she made me a hamburger here. She even found some little seeds to put on top. Huh, look at that. She made some cheese and a burger. Maybe that's, what do you think that is? Some lettuce on her burger and some buns. Now, I'm at home and sometimes I have a lot of meetings with other teachers, but I can't play with my kids all day long. I want to, but uh, since my daughter made me a burger, uh, I could ask her, huh, I wonder if you could make me something else to go with that burger so that uh, I can extend her play and make it even more engaging for her and she could continue to play with the Play-Doh. Uh, if uh, she liked the letter Q and she made her Q mat, uh, I could ask her, gosh, I wonder what other letters we could make or extend it that way or find different things that we could add to our Play-Doh kits so that there'll be lots of fun for kids to use. And so those are just some fun activities that we can do with kids with Play-Doh. So your homework, kids, is to 
make your Play-Doh and then collect some things for your Play-Doh kit. And then moms and dads can find a great place for you to keep all of your materials. So whenever you wanna play with Play-Doh, you can go do that. All right, well, that was just a very short activity time. And so part of having fun in our classroom is when you're all done having fun, you clean up. Now, Play-Doh, friends, if you uh, leave it out, it's going to get kind of uh, dry and smooth, and it won't be so smooshy anymore. So it's a great idea to keep your Play-Doh in a plastic bag, and then kids can put their Play-Doh back in the plastic bags. And it's all ready to use again. They can do their little pinch, 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 pinch to keep that Play-Doh closed. And since we've already made our, our kits like this, look at how easy a, a cleanup that is. Kids can just put their materials right back in here and clean up, and then it will be ready for the next time they want to play with Play-Doh. I wonder what you're gonna make with your Play-Doh at home. Well, I had a lot of fun making Play-Doh with you and showing you different ways that you can use Play-Doh to learn at home and have fun being a playful preschooler. Uh, we made some red Play-Doh and I showed you some of the Play-Doh that I made and we made uh, some mats that had different things on them like a three mat and we made a mat that had a cue on it. When I uh, was, was looking at those, I thought, hey, how about we end our time looking at a book together? And I found this book. It's called The Shape of Things. And this is written by Dale Ann Dodds and illustrated by Julie Lacombe. So Julie drew the pictures or created the pictures and Dale Ann Dodds, she wrote the words. And I chose this book today because when I looked through it, it reminded me of the mats that we created where one of our mats had all three things on it, and one of our mat had Q things on it. And when I looked at this book, I noticed that it had different shapes on it. So how about we read this book before we say goodbye? So this is called The Shape of Things. It's a lot of shapes. Reminds me of Play-Doh too. You could make shapes with your Play-Doh at home. The Shape of Things. A square is just a square until you add a roof to windows and a door and then it's much, much more. There's that square. There we go. A circle's just a circle until you add some lights, chairs high and low, round and round they go. So there's one big circle, a smaller circle. And I notice the lights are also in the shapes of circles. A triangle is just a triangle until you add another, an ocean, and a sky and a seagull passing by. There you go. A rectangle's just a rectangle until you add some more. An engine, a track, and a red caboose in the back. Hmm. That reminds me of the thing that Maddox created. He had different cars in a line like that with his Play-Doh creation too. An oval is just an oval until you add a nest, a wooden house, a hen, and then a patient mother hen. Laying on her egg. A diamond's just a diamond until you add some string, wind and a tail, and some friends to help it sail. 
Well, they didn't tell us what the diamond became. Hmm. A kite. I see more diamonds, too. A shape is just a shape, but look again and see. Hmm. Seen all the different things in the book. There are shapes of every kind. How many can you find? Boy, I could look at this picture a long time. See those triangles? I notice rectangles and circles. Different kinds of balloons, a hot air balloon and a clown holding some balloons. And it's a decorated end page. The end. Well, thank you, kids. I had a lot of fun hanging out with you and showing you how to make Play-Doh uh, on our first episode of The Playful Preschooler. Uh, now go out and play, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.